Hi, this is Jackie of Alchemical Cosplay, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how I used the Faf Creative 4.5 and the Premiere Plus embroidery software to create a machine embroidered goldwork design. A lot of costumes, like this uniform I'm recreating, have elements that look like goldwork. Traditionally, goldwork is embroidered by hand using actual metal threads. But I wanted to replicate this on the embroidery machine so that the process would go faster, it would be neater than me doing it by hand, and also so I could replicate the design easily on a matching costume. The goldwork elements I was trying to achieve were the metallic threads, a 3D padded effect, and textural edge stitches that look like bullion. Before diving into the very ornate shapes of the jacket, I did quite a few trials of a simple star shape. I'm going to walk through how I used the Premiere Plus software to digitize the star, which uses all the same techniques as the actual jacket. The first step is to draw out your design and upload the image as a background. This is just a very simple JPEG of a star. And you can fade this so it's a little easier to see your embroidery on top of it later. Then you go up to the quick stitch tools. So there's quick stitch with auto hole and without. And these are your fills, your edge stitch, and applique functions. So we want this to be an applique and we don't want it to have a fill because this is going to be our first layer which is cut felt for the padded effect. So now I'm clicking over onto the quick stitch feature and just hit the part of the image that I want to be filled in. So I click on the star, you can see it's shaded in, and boom, there's your applique with a satin stitch edge. This edge is really big, so I'm going to right click on the shape, go down to properties, and in this menu, you can select your stitch type. I'm going to keep it a satin line and then change the width, the density to be a little lower and narrower because this is holding down the edge of the felt. It doesn't need to be extremely wide or dense. So zooming in, you can see that it comes right to the edge of the applique shape. I'm going back into properties because I want to change this to a straight stitch so you can see more how the applique is formed. I found it worked better with my applique shape right within the edge stitch line. So I'm going back into properties here, going into the applique menu. And well, first I'm going to play around with the color. You can change your textile and you can change the color. I'm just switching it to a basic gray color that looks like the felt I used. But you can get a little crazier and do a photo of your actual fabric too. So as far as the applique, you have some choices of what kind of applique it's going to be. And I've selected pre-cut because the felt is going to be pre-cut on a Cricut machine before placing it. And down here, I match the placement line. This means that the line will be the exact size and shape of the applique to make it easier to match when you're laying your piece down. I'm leaving the margin one millimeter for now so you can see what that means. So here the shapes turn to gray. This is the placement line right there. And you can see that's the stitching line. And the applique and the placement line are outside of the stitching line. So back in the properties menu, if you take this margin down to negative one, that will mean your applique and matching line will be inside your edge stitch. So this is at a negative one millimeter margin, but you can really go crazy and I'm gonna set this to a negative three millimeters, just so you can see how far you can go. This is the way I originally built up layers of felt for padding. I ended up not using this technique to build padding layers. I'll show you the technique I did use in just a bit. Because the embroidery software does an edge stitch and placement line for each applique shape, I simplified to use just one. 
I'm going to go back into properties and set the margin to zero. This will leave us with just one applique shape that's exactly the same size as the edge stitching. Now your placement line and your edge stitch both match. I'm setting the edge stitch back to a satin line, one and a half millimeters and an eight density. And this gives just enough of a zigzag stitch to firmly tack down the edges of your felt applique. I'm going to turn all my other objects on. So I already made this and I'm just going back in to show you how I did it. So I'm going to move this to the back of the embroidery, meaning it's the first thing that will stitch out. And these are the other shapes that I've done. So this is one arm of the star. It's a satin fill with a motif edge stitch. To create these shapes, I use the Precise Create tool. And this works kind of like the pen tool in Illustrator, where you can just draw points and then hit Enter to fill that shape with your chosen fill. It kind of uses just a generic fill to start. So once you've got your shape, you go into Properties once more. And from here, you can change your pattern fill. There's tons of pattern fills, uh, lots of different textures, plants and animals, shapes, but I want this to be a satin area with no stitches between the edges. So even though I can choose from all these great satin areas, I put this down to zero, and that means the needle will just hit on the edges and pass the thread across this entire shape. So I put the start and the end points at opposite ends of the shape so the needle will go smoothly from one end to the other. And then I kind of tweak these. These control the shape of the satin fill. So I could make it a curved shape, but I wanted it straight across the arm of the star. Back in properties, we're going to change the edge stitch to a motif line. And these can be any sort of crazy things from stars and dogs, but um, going up here into these menus, Bean Stitches 1 has some excellent hand looking stitches. So this one creates a really heavy tacking kind of stitch that I liked a lot. After you create one arm shape, you can copy and paste this and rotate them to fill out the rest of your star. So here's all the shapes together. Now, the last thing that I did was to create an edge with a heavier motif line. So here it is isolated, so you can see it a bit better. And this is also a bean stitch. So in properties, it's a motif line, and it's a bean stitch 15. And that makes this really great super heavy zigzag that looks like a metal bullion thread. So I put that on the very top to stitch it out last, and there you go. Now you can run your preview, and this shows exactly how your embroidery will stitch out. So this is the machine doing the placement line, and it stops. And this is when you put your pre-cut felt applique shape down using spray and bond adhesive to keep the felt in place while the machine does the zigzag stitching on the edges and then fills in the rest of the shapes. This is a really fast version just to speed things along. And there you go, you have a star. Uh, next you export your files. So export the applique pieces you have a bunch of choices here. You can export it for a cutter. If you have a cutter that can read specific files, that's great. But what I ended up doing for the Cricut is to export it as a PNG file because its software can read that a lot easier, I found. And also I used the PNG file in Illustrator to offset the shape and make additional layers of padding. Before we do that, go back up and export your embroidery. There's a lot of different options of format you can export it in. 
Um, for the Creative 4.5, I use the VP3, and I usually export it directly onto a thumb drive so I can easily upload it onto my machine. Now that the applique shape is exported, I take it into Adobe Illustrator and I live trace or image trace the shape, make and expand it, and then you can just grab the star shape itself. And I'm going to change the color so I can see it. You can delete the rest of that stuff. You don't need that. This is just your applique shape vectorized, essentially. So the next thing I'm going to do is go into path and offset the path. And I offset it by one and a half millimeters, negative one and a half millimeters. So it offsets the inside. So change the color again so you can see this. And notice that now I will have two star shapes, one that's a millimeter and a half smaller than the original applique. So the idea here is by cutting both these stars from felt and stacking them, I will have a more padded area in the center while still having thinner edges that can easily be stitched down by the machine. In order to have these in a format the Cricut software can easily understand, I copy and paste them into Photoshop and just save them as a JPEG. And make sure to name them in a system where you can keep track of which shape is the original applique and which one is the smaller one, um, just so you don't get confused later. It's pretty obvious for the most part. The largest one will be your real applique, and then the smaller one will be the padding layer underneath. But because Cricut doesn't automatically match the size of your file, it's important just to keep track of which one's which so you can check the sizing and make sure it cuts out accurately. Importing your applique shapes with Cricut is really easy. You find your files, you just simplify it, deselect the background, and save it as a cut image. Now make sure you're saving this with the same name as the corresponding size so you don't get confused because now you're going to upload the second star shape and also name it properly because these shapes are going to look almost identical and when you import them Cricut doesn't save the sizes and it's very important that these shapes are the correct size otherwise they won't fit into your embroidery design properly. So go back into Illustrator, find the transform tool and just copy and paste either the width or height into Cricut's transform tool which will automatically put your shape back to the right size. So the smaller one is two and something and just paste that into its width and there you go now your stars are the same size and you can go ahead and cut these out of felt. Using a cutter for your felt applique really does make it incredibly easy to get an accurate shape that will fit precisely into your placement line which is shown here. This is the basting adhesive that I use First, I bond the smaller felt piece to the larger one to make that stack. And then I spray the back of both of them. And then you stick your shape down right onto the placement line, being as careful as possible to get those edges matched up. Because the next thing your machine will do is run that zigzag stitch around the edges. And you want it to catch the edges to hold the shape in place. Here the machine is doing the satin fill on the edges of the star arms. And you can see the needles just passing right from one side to the other, creating these beautiful floating stitches that give a super beautiful metallic sheen to it. And this is what the finished trial looks like. Even though I experimented with different weights and brands of thread, the big difference came down to what color I wanted to use. The actual costume, the shapes are more complicated, but the technique is exactly the same. I drew out my design, then digitized it in Premiere Plus, 
had my Cricut cut out the felt padding shapes, and then the Faf Creative 4.5 does the rest. Probably one of my favorite parts of doing this as a machine embroidery is that while the Faf is doing the heavy lifting and making this gorgeous embroidery, I can be drawing the other elements of the costume, pattern making, cutting pieces, doing some pad stitching. So in part two of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I incorporate the embroidered elements into the jacket and using the sewing features of the Creative 4.5, how to use some machine-aided tailoring techniques to sew up the rest of this jacket. I hope you'll look forward to it and I'll talk to you then. Thanks for watching.